So I've had quite a few people ask me lately about my blood work video and if I could give an update on that. And if you're new to the channel or you haven't seen those videos, basically what I did was I went and got my blood tested a few years ago just to see if I had any deficiencies. I was sick of hearing the anti-vegan rhetoric and I've been a vegan myself for over two and a half decades now. So I just wanted to prove to people that, you know, you can be a vegan, you can be healthy and not have deficiencies. So for none other reason than that, I just went to my doctor and asked him if I could get uh, my blood work done. So that's what we did and uh, the blood work came back. The first one I did was back in 2017, of the fall of 2017. And uh, I don't have that paper in front of me, but I have some of the, uh, the data. So um, basically everything was good. My vitamin D was a little bit lower, uh, but that wasn't a vegan thing. That's just kind of a, a geographical thing. A lot of people are deficient on vitamin D. Actually, a lot of Americans are deficient on vitamin D. More people that aren't vegan are deficient on vitamin D than are vegan. It was just something that I just started taking a, a supplement for a vitamin, uh, which I never did up until that point. So I think the first 23 years of me being a vegan, I never took supplements. So my vitamin D was a little bit low. Uh, I started taking the, the vitamins. I, I Currently I take a vitamin called Vegan Essentials. Uh, Healthy Cell is the company. Uh, I'll link it below. It's uh, a gel pack designed for vegans. It's got your omegas, your B12, your vitamin D, iron. It's got everything you need. I take it maybe two or three times a week. The rest of the, the things on my uh, chart basically said my, my B12 was good. I uh, never take any B12 uh, vitamins or anything and my B12 was good. Uh, everything else on there was good. My cholesterol is what uh, the main thing people have been asking me about. So I pulled up a uh, just a quick Google search on uh, what is a optimal and what is a healthy cholesterol level. I'm right now looking under the US National Library of Medicine and um, I will look under uh, men age 20 or older. Okay, so that would be my category. So total cholesterol, healthy level would be between 125 and 200. Uh, my cholesterol back in 2017 was 181. So it's still within the healthy level, but it's up there towards the 200. So not worried or anything. Um, my triglycerides back then were 101. HDL, which is good cholesterol, was 38. And my bad cholesterol, uh, the LDL, was 123. Now when I look on here, it says that LDL um, for a, a healthy level would be under 100. So mine was 123. They say 100 to 129 is going to be near optimal. So yeah, mine was still near optimal, but a little bit higher than I thought it was gonna be. You know, being a vegan and you know, vegans don't eat cholesterol, so how was it so high? Well, it turns out that some of the foods that vegans eat can increase their cholesterol, and some people are more prone to having higher cholesterol. So things like saturated fats, trans fats, oils. You know, I was eating a lot of coconut oil, which is almost 90% saturated fat, so I took that completely out of my diet at that point. We've known for nearly a half century, according to 200 of the country's leading experts in cardiovascular diseases in a report representing 29 national medical organizations, including the American Heart Association, the American College of Cardiology, that coconut oil is one of the most potent agents for elevating the level of cholesterol in the blood. Coconut oil may even be worse than tallow or beef fat, but not as bad as butter. Uh, my doctor wanted to give me medicine for that. I was like, no, it's still near optimal, and I don't want to take medicine. I'll just eat differently. So um, I tried a few different things. I wanted to get my HDL up because I heard that my HDL was a little bit low. That's your good cholesterol, and mine was in the 30s. So I don't smoke and I don't drink. I do exercise, so I just tried to increase my exercise, tried to increase my cardio, and I started running more. I took oils out of my diet, so I went back and I eventually got my blood tested again. It was a little bit better, but the, 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 the LDL cholesterol was still pretty high, and I was like, well, you know, it is near optimal still, so I don't want to say it's bad, but um, it wasn't where I 
thought it should be. So I'm like, all right, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try something else. And I tried some different things. Finally, I think I got my blood tested about five times within the next uh, couple years. And the last time I got my blood tested was last summer, but I didn't do a video on that one. I'm gonna kind of go over that with you guys in this video. I ended up going on the Esselstyn diet, which is, if you guys don't know, Dr. Esselstyn is a, is a renowned uh, vegan doctor. He's uh, helped uh, heart disease. He's shown that it's the only diet that has been proven to help heart disease. And I'm not saying that I had heart disease or anything, but what I did was I stuck to this diet. And basically what it was, was uh, you're not eating any kind of processed foods. You're eating all vegan food, obviously. I'm, I've always been vegan. Well, at least for the last 20, 26 years now. But a lot of greens, you're gonna eat no uh, saturated fats, which means no oils, completely cut the oils out of the diet, which I did. No avocado, no nuts. Uh, he does say that if you really, really wanna eat nuts, you can eat maybe a small handful per day. Um, but anything over that is gonna be counterproductive, so. And that's how I ate for the next uh, month and a half, I think it was, before I went and got tested again to see if this worked or not. Because let's just say I'm, I love food and it wasn't fun doing this, you know? I mean, you know, I'm all about my health, but I, I, I really wanted to find another way where I could still eat food. And so anyway, I went back and I got my, cholesterol checked after this and the results this was uh, june of 2018 my overall cholesterol dropped to 142 which is really good my triglycerides dropped from 100 to 88 which is good my hdl my good cholesterol stayed the same 35 ldl my bad cholesterol went from 123 let's just say it went from 123 to the next time i got tested there uh, it, the worst it was was about 129 still within the near optimal but like borderline so anyway my uh my good cholesterol after the esselstyn diet went down to 89 which was really good my cholesterol was good now at this point. Some people would still probably say something about the HDL. I was kind of worried about that. I did some research. I found some videos by Dr. Greger where he kind of goes over this and I'm not worried anymore about it. Basically what he says is if your, your, your bad cholesterol is at a good level, you shouldn't really have anything to worry about. And some people are just genetically where I think I'm at, can't get my uh, HDL up. And they say that, you know, taking medicine or t any kind of drugs to make your HDL go up has not shown any kind of correlation to helping anybody with heart disease. So basically what they're saying, if you have a bad LDL cholesterol, giving you um, a, any kind of drug to increase the HDL is not gonna do anything for that. Having a high blood HDL level is no longer regarded as protective. What? But wait a second. Higher HDL is clearly associated with lower risk of heart disease. In fact, HDL levels are among the most consistent and robust predictors of cardiovascular disease risk. Ah, but see, there are two types of risk factors, causal and non-causal. Association does not mean causation, meaning that just because two things are tightly linked doesn't mean one causes the other. And the analogy he made in the video was going over to somebody's house and seeing eight ashtrays on the, the coffee table. And that might be a good indicator that this person may have uh, lung cancer. So they take seven ashtrays away. And you would think, would that help him with his lung cancer? It's not going to do anything because the ashtrays aren't the cause of the lung cancer. It's the smoking. And this is what he's saying about the HDL. So no matter what I've done, it, it hasn't really done anything, but I, uh, I rest assured knowing that my, uh, my bad cholesterol is actually at a good level. I went back to the doctor again last year. I got my blood work done. I, I ate a little bit differently at this point, and people wanted to know an update on my blood work. I just never got around to doing this video. And I wasn't hiding anything from anybody. I just didn't do the video. So what I did for my eating habits was I tried to balance things out a little bit better. I didn't want to go zero processed food 100% of the time. I wanted to indulge at certain times if I was you know, out with friends or if I just felt like having a cheap food, I wanted to be able to do that. Whereas you know, I, I'm mainly eating healthy most of the time. I still don't today use oil in my diet. I don't cook with oil or add it to my my food, but I understand that sometimes if I'm eating some kind of a processed food, it might have oil in it. I do eat avocado now, but uh, I, I don't eat a ton, I guess. 
I don't eat like, you know, an avocado a day or anything like that. I might have uh, one or two avocados a week at, at most, sometimes only like maybe one or half of one. Uh, and nuts, and I do eat nuts too. So I try to eat them sparingly, but I, I, I make food with them. I use them as ingredients and, uh, and, I, and I like them. Here is my cholesterol after changing my diet a, a little bit. So my, my total cholesterol, 152. So that's still really healthy. Triglycerides uh, stayed at 88, which is good. My HDL didn't budge, stayed the same, uh, 34. And my uh, LDL cholesterol, 100. Now they say below 99 is going to be um, the, the healthy, optimal one. And 100 to 129 is gonna be near optimal. I'm not gonna to be too picky, mine being 100, being one point above the, uh, the, the, the best you can have. So I'm, I'm completely fine with that. That's a good cholesterol level. Uh, and I'm not worried about the HDL because my LDL is, is healthy. Everything else on here, my vitamin D stayed the same because I, I take the supplement for vitamin D. And everything else on here, all the, all the nutrients and everything are all within normal levels, all healthy levels. My B12 is healthy, my platelets, uh, hemoglobin, Everything is at a normal level here. Glucose is at a good level. Uh, BUN, good level. Can never say this word, creatinine. Not creatine, but creatinine. Uh, 0.99, which is a good level. Uh, sodium, good level. Uh, potassium, all normal. Calcium, normal, 9.4. Uh, protein, uh, normal, 7.3. And my bilirubin is the only other thing that you might see that uh, sticks out as above normal, formed in the liver. My my other liver, liver functions is all normal, so my doctor wasn't worried about that. He diagnosed me a couple years ago with Gilbert syndrome, something that you're born with. It's benign, so there's nothing to worry about. There's no symptoms, I have no symptoms and uh, there's nothing to do about it. So there's no causes of it or anything that they know of. You know, I was kind of worried when I heard him say it, but when I found out that it's basically like, like nothing, just I have a little bit of a elevated bilirubin level, so nothing to worry about. So I take those vitamins, uh, like I said, two or three times a week, and I'm going to get my blood tested again because this was a, about a year ago. So I'll be doing that. And I'm excited this time because, let me tell you why, I found uh, a new website that uh, is going to make the experience a little bit better and that is called letsgetchecked.com and I'm going to tell you a little bit about why I'm excited about this over going to my doctor to get this. So normally I would go to my doctor and I have a family doctor. I, no joke, wait in the waiting room for about three or four hours before I'm seen and then I get papers to go get tested. I get the test done, the results come in, and then I go back to the doctor and I sit in the waiting room for another three or four hours and then he sees me and then he goes over the results and then I either you know, change my diet up or do something different and then go back and do the same thing again. It's really not that fun, but it's something that's important to me. I wanna make sure that I'm healthy because uh, you know we only have one body, so I wanna keep that healthy. So this website, uh, letsgetchecked.com, this is how it works. So you will get, you, you order it online, which I will give you a coupon code for down below. I think it's gonna be zombie. And it will arrive in discrete packaging overnight. So you open it up, you collect the samples, you package it back up, and then you return it with a prepaid shipping label that they're gonna provide with you. And then you will have in two to five business days, they'll have results for you that they will give to you uh, discreetly over a secured uh, online or over the phone. And you will have the option to have it reviewed by a physician. And then a nurse will call you if you wish and go over your results and give you a little phone uh, consolation. If it comes down to it and you need any kind of prescription, there are physicians to give you prescriptions for anything you might need. These tests are all CLIA approved and CAP accredited, which are some of the highest level rankings out there. So you're getting a good test in, in a very easy, uh, convenient way. And a lot of people have also asked me if I recommend that they get their blood checked as being a vegan. And I want to say right now, I'm not a doctor. I'm not in the health uh, care profession. I'm not a dietitian and nutritionist, but with that being said, I think that it's very important to keep up on your health 
and like I said, you know, you only have one body, so you know, keep it in the best condition you can. That's my mentality ever since I was a little kid. So I don't think it can hurt, and I think everybody, you know, if you're a vegan and you don't know, and you're you're wondering if you're deficient on anything, which could very well be the case if you're not eating right, you could be deficient on things. Like I said, it can't hurt, and I'm actually really passionate about promoting this product because it has to deal with with your health, and that's something that, that is important to me and should be important to everybody. So check it below. I'll have links to the videos that I was talking about. I'll have links to discounts for the test and also diff discounts for the vitamins that I use. And if you guys have any questions, uh, let me know in the comments below. I will be doing another test myself. So when I get the results on those, I will go over that in a video with you guys and show you what my uh, what my results are now. And this is a year later, so haven't been tested in a year and I'm kind of curious to see where I'm at. So again, if you like the video, subscribe, hit the little bell so you get notifications. And as always, stay safe, watch out for zombies, and I'll see you guys next time.